Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the British Academy Games Awards. Please welcome your host, Dara O'Brien. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the British Academy Game Awards, kindly supported by Game. Hello to those watching live online on the BAFTA website, our YouTube channel, or on Twitch. Our live stream tonight is powered by Alienware, high performance PC and laptop gaming systems. I'm not reading that in off of queue. That's literally coming from my heart, those words I said about. <laughs> It is a pleasure to be here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the fifth year in a row in which I've hosted these awards uh, for the big hello to anyone who's managed to make all five of them. Uh, it has been a joy every time. But one thing may have changed. In the five years I've done this, the weird thing about hosting an award like this, right, and this may be letting me behind the curtain slightly, is, is you do become like an advocate for the industry in a kind of a weird way, because you get asked questions about it a lot. And you know the kind of questions you get asked, right? The whole thing that you, and you end up developing a very defensive, positive answers about, oh, the, the amount of creative energy that's coming into, oh, don't talk to me about violence, for God's sake. There's only a, a so this kind of stuff that you end up doing. I remember being, being at BBC Breakfast about three years ago, and they were like, oh, is this not a lot of sitting around in a, in a room in the dark? And I said, well, oh, how will I put it? Have you seen The West Wing? And the woman said, yes. And I said, well, that was seven episodes, 22 hours each uh, series. So that's about 150 hours of sitting in the dark on a couch. So who are you to judge? You just get quite defensive, right, about the whole thing, right? I just did an interview for Sky News about an hour ago, right? And I had all the defences up. I was ready with the speech about violence. I was ready with the speech about the, the, how this is the in industry that's taking all the creative talent into it. I even had some line about, if you think this is bad for young people, no, bad for young people is being let out outside the O2 at half past 12 at night. That's what's bad for young people in this country, right? That stuff, right? I was all ready to go with that, right? And your man goes, so you're here with the BAFTA and there's lots of nominations. And he said, do you know what I hate? And I'm ready. I am bristling, right, ready to go. And he goes, do you know what I hate? He says, when you're being shot by 12-year-olds in Germany and there's nothing you can do about it, they're just better at the games than you are, right? And I'm suddenly thrown into this loop of, Jesus, this is an ordinary conversation about games on Sky News. Where do I go from here? I, uh, and I give him the violence answer because it was all I was ready. Oh, well, well violence is obviously... And, and he was like, genuinely was confused. And he said, no, no, and like, they, they laugh at you. And I'm going, well, obviously all the creative talent is mainly moving into the industry at the moment. Like that. It's weird, because for a while, because you host this thing, it feels like I'm your representative on Earth, that I'm kind of the guy who, has to, who gives your message across, right? And there's times that that's felt, as you know well, like a weird sell. At half five tonight, I had a conversation live on Sky News, which was just about playing games. The job is done, well done. You're in the race, chair. That's right. That's just... We're past that point. It's a pleasure. We just, we've moved on and we can just... Listen, you've got sake, you're twice the size of every other industry. It should be. Uh, but nonetheless, right, okay. listen, it is a pleasure to be here, ladies and gentlemen, an absolute delight. And we, we have an interesting year ahead of us. We have a number of fantastic, fantastic you know, nominees. But like, we're across 53 different games. You've already started cheering your own, which is a wonderful thing to see. You want energy in the room, right? I don't mean partisanship, but stuff you like and stuff you enjoy and you know the games, right? Now, I should have a big, long monologue written about this stuff, right? But the games kind of arrived in a bit this year, as you well know, right? I spent most of this year playing last year's game, waiting for this year's games to be released, right? Because uh, you kind of went big on the Q4 this year, right? Uh, and I'm not one to, look, I'd be hypocritical of me to point that out, given that I'm a comedian, and frankly, we always release things on literally the 16th of November. Uh, so, so who am I to give out about the fact that the, all the games come out at the same time? But I don't, because I, I, I don't have a huge monologue, because frankly, I'm at that bit in Far Cry 3 where I've got five missions to go, and I'm fecked if I'm not finishing it uh, for the thing. Just a bit, hello to anyone involved in Far Cry 3, by the way, of all the ones they probably got. Congratulations. Merely want to ask why he's so flammable. Is there any particular reason? <laughs> Why Jason Brody is constantly patting himself on the arms in the middle of fight. If he walks past a barrel, the guy goes up in flames. And it's literally shoot, shoot, pat, pat, shoot, shoot, pat, pat, citrus boobies. That is essentially 
the experience of Far Cry 3 for me, like whatever. And it's been a pleasure, don't get me wrong, it's been an absolute a, a joy a, 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 to do like whatever, but it is one of those things. I, I've played a, a number of them I've got to and some of them I haven't quite got to. There is one feature by the way which is turning up more and more, which is the trippy dream sequence, possibly on drugs. You're loving that as an industry at the moment. You are loving the bit of the game which isn't really feel like a game because he's just, and suddenly it's in a different location and all the physics have been changed. And it doesn't matter if it's Batman and Scarecrow or your man in Far Cry 3 taking the pills or all of Journey uh, or all of, of Dear Esther. Hello, anyone involved in either Dear Esther or Journey? Fabulous experiences, all that. Journey in particular, oh, when the little man is in the snow and he can't move on and you think, oh, please, you're going to die in the snow and you'll never get through the thing. A lot of people found Journey to be a very touching, very moving gaming experience. This sudden collaboration with some unknown person online, the two of you beeping at each other. Not so much fun for me, because I played it once, and the guy I played with was an arsehole. Uh, and <laughs> it just kind of took a bit of the good out of it. But it is one of these things, it's, it's what these things that, that you do. And you are now taking ownership of form and structure in a way that you weren't five years ago, and it's incredibly interesting to see where you're gonna go from that. You're not just doing movies anymore, and by any stretch of the imagination. It is exciting to watch you take your own structure, and you, you shouldn't be, for God's sake. There's no reason why you should take any of this up. You've seen movies, movies are getting dumber, and looper, for Christ's sake. You people can make a plot line last for 40 hours. Looper got one hour into the film and the guy went, ah, shite, I'm out of time travel ideas. Uh, <laughs> we better make the kid a mutant, right? Uh, and don't want to give away any spoiler alerts here, right? But it was such a, what? You can't have two things. You can't have them be time travel and, what? oh great, make an alien invasion and just go for the hat trick. Why don't you just, if you haven't got any ideas, you do that. Prequels, oh, we're beginning to see prequels. Tomb Raider, for example, just recently out. We may say it here next year, I haven't seen a copy of it yet because you've yet to give me a free copy, but you know, the night's young. Uh, so. <laughs> Tomb Raider is going in the prequel thing. Not everything deserves a prequel. V movies have gone bananas on prequels. Don't go crazy. We do not want to see every beloved character. We do not want to see their origin story. I do not want to see a gritty, realistic shot of a small Italian man going, no, I killed that turtle, uh, <laughs> before he gets used to it. Those are things, they're, they're, they're not necessarily your thing. A perfect example, Walking Dead. Who didn't presume that Walking Dead was, was, when they were released, going to be some sort of strange tie into the TV show? It was not. It was a stunningly original thing. Congratulations to any involved in Walking Dead. Anyone here from Walking Dead? Very good. Very interesting. Prissy, though. Jesus, aren't they prissy? You know? With the, you pick a, 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 like a, a, an option and they go, John will remember that. John is being chased by zombies. John has other priorities at the moment. John should really get over himself at this stage, right? By the way, I think I've mentioned all but two of the things. Dishonored was the other one, of course. Fantastic, well done, Dishonored. Steampunk joy that Dishonored was. And as ever, FIFA 13, which I think is a particularly brilliant iteration of FIFA 13. They're the six, by the way. And you'll see more of them. Guten Abend, uh, Boris Vigates. Uh, yeah, good. Uh, okay. It's kind of weird to look down and see Boris Becker staring up at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stimmt, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, in England, there's an uh, so, but, the, uh, but the one thing I do want to say, and there are, there are new BAFTAs here. There are new BAFTAs here for the best British developer, best British game. That's fantastic, right? And it's, it does show basically that this, the BAFTA are supporting this industry at each level. Obviously, they're very high. The Dare to be Digital level with the very, very low. Last year's winners, uh, TikTok Toys, went onto the App Store this week. So that's uh, fantastic to see. The, uh, But my heart goes out to one person in the industry who I think is forgotten, ladies and gentlemen. I think there's one person who, uh, in each of your development teams, who, who deserves an award and doesn't seem to get one, right? And that person is whoever has to write the 20 nearly identical, vague, but slightly plot-revealing letters which are scattered randomly around the sandpit area for you to collect when the main story is done. <laughs> Whatever poor idiot has to sit down and go, uh, Dear Clara, I suspect I shall never leave this island now. Uh, those letters, right? Or those tapes of a scientist going, Day 17, we've opened a strange doorway to a power source we could only imagine. But all the scientists are getting headaches. I wonder what's going to happen next. Those letters, right? 
You make me collect those things. I want to fight. If I can meet anyone at the end of this night, it's the guy whose job it is to write those things. And who should write letter 20, which is, I shall never leave this asylum slash prison slash spaceship slash island. But the last thing I shall do is write 20 identical letters. <laughs> and then hide them, hide them in barrels randomly around this location. And then give you some gamer points for finding that, right? So, whoever that guy is, bring him to me. I want to meet that work experience dude who has to write those letters. OK. Listen, we are here to celebrate your incredible work. It has been, as ever, a fantastic year. It is, in some ways, you could say the, the, the list in many years has been, particularly the best game, has been like blockbuster roller coasters of huge things, huge franchises, huge. This is not that, right? There, there are some huge ones. Obviously, Mass Effect is there and Far Cry and Fe But yet, we've gone independent. We've got different schools of thought. It's a really interesting time in your industry. And as a consumer, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens next year and the next year and the next year. Well done to you. Give us a round of applause. We'll start the awards in a moment. Give us a round of applause. There's that. But let's get on with some awards, ladies and gentlemen. Aptly enough, the first up is the BAFTA Award for Debut Game. New Blood is vital in any industry, except comedy, of course, where we have quite enough. Thank you very much. Uh, that's done. <laughs> To present our first BAFTA, we have an actor and comedian who's won the nation's heart for his performance as Gavin in Gavin and Stacey, and more recently starred as Headmaster Fraser in Bad Education. So please pay attention at the back. Please welcome Matthew Horn, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone, and uh, hello to everyone at home watching online, naked. Um, how are we all? Everyone good? I've got to say, you do look fit. How was your dinner? It's some of the best horse I've had all week, I have to say. <laughs> this year's nominees for Debut Game have all created exciting and occasionally surreal worlds where imaginative characters perform a host of fascinating tasks, from fighting zombies in Seattle to chasing a swan that's esca escaped from a painting. It's one of the most important awards of the night because without you guys originating and revolutionizing the game industry, we'd all be stuck way back in the boring old age, dark ages of 2011. <laughs> the nominees for Debut Game are... Debut Game. For the Horizon. The Unfinished Swan. <laughs> Dear Esther. Somewhere between the longitude and latitude, a split opened up, and it beached remotely here. No matter how hard I correlate, it remains a singularity. The Room. <laughs> Deadlight. This is it. This is what's left of our world now. These are the leftovers of the war between men and shadows. A snapshot of what we've become. Bloody hell on Earth. Proteus. And the BAFTA goes to the unfinished swan. I'm absolutely blown away to be here. That's incredible. Um, just thanks to BAFTA, thanks to everyone who voted. I just dedicate this to the uh, wonderfully talented guys, the Santa Monica Studio Giant Sparrow team. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Yeah. 
the unfinished one there. Played it, haven't finished it. OK. The, <laughs> the next award is for original music. And to present it is a young man currently setting the music scene alight. He was first spotted on YouTube. And the screaming has this. This is actually, this could work just as well for Bieber. Uh, so, which would make him late a second night. That would be hilarious. Uh, OK. He, however, our guest, whoever lays him, is, is someone from here. He's a winner of MTV's brand new for 2012 award and has gone on to perform with the likes of Neo and Rita Ora. Please channel your inner teen and go wild for Connor Maynard, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, OK, so lots of things have to combine together to make a great game. And for me, music is definitely one of the most important things. And, and guns. But mainly music, definitely. So uh, this award pays tribute to the amazing talent that once again has excelled in this genre. Here are the nominees for the original music BAFTA. Original music. Assassin's Creed 3. Diablo 3 The Unfinished Swan Thomas Was Alone Journey. The Walking Dead. Okay, so the BAFTA is awarded to so excited. Journey. Dreams really can come true. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, the real hero here is Austin Wintry. <laughs> Thanks, Austin, for your wonderful, highly personal, emotional score. Thanks to all the musicians who gave life, spirit, and soul to the music. Thank you to all my brilliant colleagues at Sony PlayStation Music Department. Thanks to that game company. And thank you uh, to the Academy for the tremendous support and recognition they give to the, to the video game industry. Thank you very much. The development team just wanted to thank Austin because he was a true member of our team. He was with us from day one. His music was an inspiration to us as developers and got us through some of the tough times. Thank you so much. Thank you. Team from Journey there, ladies and gentlemen, who I suggested should be seated in a different room and really struggle to get here if they won. Uh, and <laughs> Man, how young is that kid? Bloody hell. Uh, like a zygote in a tux. OK. Uh, Now it's time for the award for a story. Without a story that captivates and engages you nothing, and there is some fantastic storytelling out there. So let's find out which of one of these storytellers is going to have a happy ending tonight. That didn't come out the way I meant to. Okay, to present 
We have an award-winning scriptwriter who describes herself as a narrative paramedic and is the lead narrative paramedic on the new Tomb Raider game. And with her, we have Jack from the hit sitcom Hebron, also a brilliant stand-up comedian who's made regular appearances on 8 out of 10 Cats, Buzzcocks, and of course, Mock the Week. Please welcome Rihanna Pratchett and Chris Ramsey. This BAFTA is awarded for excellence in the creation and delivery of the best story that captivates and engages a player. It's not just enough to have a beginning, middle and end. This is about greatness. Uh, hello. Yeah, uh, I'm a little bit, tiny bit nervous to be up here. I know some of the other sick bastards who came up with Dark Souls. Uh, <laughs> I saw them cutting themselves in the toilets earlier, a bit scary. Uh, so if you don't, <laughs> just don't shoot the messenger, right? What do your parents think of you? You're sick. <laughs> it's a good game though, sorry. <laughs> um, here we go. So, uh, and uh, the nominees for Story are... Story. The Walking Dead. Just for a month. Ha, the hell you <laughs> I'll get more food, more medicine, anything, just think stop panicking. Seriously, Ben, you need to stop and just take a breath. Thomas was alone. Chris was in love. She was perfect. He had to tell her so. Probably best to wait for a moment the large, ominous pixel cloud wasn't about that. Far Cry 3. The only way off this island is to transform myself. Anything you face. Into something I never thought I could become. Dishonored. I will remind you that if your men spend time with any of our ladies, they have to pay. Yes, ma'am. Journey. Mass Effect 3. Sensors show a Reaper parked at the Shroud facility. No way you're going to be able to land a shuttle there. Get everyone assembled in the war room. I want eyes on the Shroud. Aye, aye, sir. Exciting stuff. And here we go. I'm chuffed I'm seeing this. And the BAFTA goes too. The Walking Dead! <laughs> uh, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, this story probably wouldn't exist without a zillion other people. Uh, everybody at Telltale, every single person there contributed something to this story, whether it's a line of dialogue or a whole moment. Robert Kirkman, obviously. Dan and Kevin, like, let us tell a crazy story and never told us to stop, which is kind of insane. But uh, thank you so much. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks to Dave and Melissa for being Lee and Clementine. Thanks to Kevin and Kirsten, our producers. Thanks to everyone who picked Walking Dead. Thanks to the Academy. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. A real quick, a real, real quick comment. Sean and Jake tend to be real critical of themselves. I wanted to thank them as well for being the creative leads and pouring the foundation for this thing that everybody's responded to so well. So thank you, Sean and Jake. Now, throughout the evening, we're going to take a closer look at each of the six games nominated for Best Game. It is a testament to the vibrancy of the industry that these six nominees range so widely across genres and platforms. I have no idea how you would even compare these. They're so diverse. Each of them, however, deserves its acclaim, and throughout the awards, we'll feature each one in turn. First up is the one that has proven the greatest time sink in my life at the moment. It's the tropical pirate sandbox, Far Cry 3. <laughs> The savages on this island do unspeakable things. I think Far Cry 3 should win best game because, you know what, it's a standout open world game. There's been a lot of open world games out there and they often suffer from the side missions being a bit pointless. And I think with this game, everything about it feels great. You, it's worth doing the side missions, it's worth driving around. You have the freedom to explore. And I think that really is a, a strong benefit with this game. <laughs> 
you play the lead character Jason Brody, who's this uh, surfer dude who's partying in an island with his friends. Uh, they get kidnapped by pirates. He has to escape. Really, this game's just about point-blank revenge for the death of his brother. I mean, I like the different elements of Far Cry 3. I like the crafting element, which means that you need to skin animals in order to increase your weapon holster, for example. Um, I like the fact you need to collect plants as well in order to gain health or other advantages, hunting skills. That's a really nice touch with it. At the end of the day, it's definitely worth skinning a shark, a Komodo dragon, or a tiger of some sort because of what you can gain from it. Don't worry, I'm here. Oh my Stay God. still. They took Oliver. They took Oliver. I can't do anything about him now. Far Cry 3, for me, is the type of game that I intend to just play 30 minutes of. I'll be like, I'll just whip upstairs, quick go on it. Then three hours later, I'm like, what is going on here? I'm skinning more animals. Find me something to skin. What's going on back there? Traffic control. But it's brilliant, that says a lot about it. It's so immersive, it draws you in. And once you're in there, you want to keep playing it and keep playing it. Please. No. I want you to say more than that. The first of our nominees for best game, ladies and gentlemen. Jason Brody there of Far Cry, spending a whole two minutes not on fire. Yeah. On to our next award of the evening, which is the BAFTA for Sports slash Fitness. This is for the sports game that best emulates the playing or management of traditional real-world sports or fitness games. I think you know what it is. Uh, I say emulates, obviously, there's still a long way to go between games and reality. For example, in FIFA 13, the same person can be the manager of Chelsea for an entire season, uh, which is never happened. <laughs> To present the word, we have genuine sporting legends, which seems to be slightly, in some ways, ironic. Uh, to present the award, we have a tennis legend, proper tennis, not Wii Sport, and with them a man uh, so good uh, as a rugby legend that is about to be immortalised in a statue at Wembley. Uh, also, by the way, uh, you may remember from Strictly Come Dancing, where he was the exact opposite of Anne Widdicombe in as much as he was a good dancer and a left winger. Please welcome <laughs> Boris Becker and Martin Offia. Guten Abend, BAFTA Games. Ich könnte Ihnen den ganzen Abend auf Deutsch moderieren, aber Sie würden kein Wort verstehen, deswegen werde ich lieber in Englisch wegen. That was a short version for good evening. Good evening. Yeah, you, you pretty started it. With the advent of technology, the difference between playing a real sport and a game version is becoming less and less. Although there is still one big distinction, my three-year-old son Amadeus wouldn't beat me in actual tennis, I hope. Each of tonight's nominees has surpassed themselves at bringing the thrills and the excitement of the sporting arena to the gaming screen. The nominees for Sports and Fitness are... Sports Fitness F1 Forza Horizon. New Star Soccer. <laughs> Trials Evolution. For 13. Here's trouble. We all know what he can do from here. And this could be dangerous because he. Strong header! Oh, yes, he's there! And he just guided the ball perfectly when he's there. Nike Plus Connect Training. And the BAFTA goes to. New Star Soccer. Wow. Um, 
I guess this has been uh, 10 years in the making, um, 10 years of ups and downs, um, times when my wife said to me that I might actually have to get a real job. Um, fortunately, I didn't have to because she already had one. So. Um, but on, honestly, I wouldn't be able to uh, accept this award without thanking her. Uh, she's supported me all the way. And um, thank you also. Thanks quickly just to uh, Nick Grieg and John Holden who've been there right from the start 10 years ago. And uh, thanks to all the passionate fans. And um, thank you, BAFTA. Cheers. Thank you to Boris and Martin, both of whom, like me, are probably on the, probably on the wrong side of their international sporting career uh, at this stage. So. Now it's the Battle for Game Innovation to present this award. We have a man best known for presenting the ITV breakfast show Daybreak. Uh, he's also a former professional tennis player himself and wants to be Andy Murray, which probably means now he's still British number four. Please welcome <laughs> Dan Lobb. Hello, good evening. Uh, innovation, then, uh, is the lifeblood of the games industry, and it is an industry that uh, simply can only survive by moving forward. Tonight, we celebrate your achievement in this highly competitive category. Your innovative minds have given us uh, astonishing diversity, from white swans to black ops, from Sesame Street to Hogwarts, and from a mountainous desert to a 2D world. Let's have a look at the nominees. Game Innovation Journey Connect Sesame Street TV Welcome to Get Roll the first video! Unfinished Swan. Wonder Book. Books of Spells. of Duty, Black Ops 2. And the BAFTA goes to the unfinished swan. Lost for words, and all my colleagues will quite honestly say that's that never happens. So once again, um, full credit to the guys on the team. Just uh, I'm sure they're going to be as blown away as me. So once again, thank you very much. Good luck. <laughs>